Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viss. In this video, it's just going to be a brief one. Uh, we're going to talk about an update that was made to the XR Interaction Toolkit, which kind of makes it difficult to follow along with my videos because they've changed basically how the controllers work. So if you don't have uh, things set up the way I'm going to teach you today, my previous videos about getting up and running are not going to work. So let's get to that real quick. Make sure to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so when I started this series, uh, we were using the XR Interaction Toolkit um, version 0.94, which was in preview. And that worked great. But they have just updated it to version 0.10. And you can tell which one you have just by, well, looking in here, first of all. Um, but also, if you try to create a new XR item here, you have this one on the old style, right? There's just a regular room scale XR rig and a stationary XR rig. So let's go ahead and update to the newest version just so you can see what the difference is. It should give you this warning here about switching to the new input system, which is the biggest change in this uh, new update. So we'll go ahead and hit yes, and it'll restart the system for us. So, okay, if that all went well, you should have 0 0.10. Um, and we can close this. And then if you right click again and go to the XR hierarchy, you'll see a whole bunch of different things here. Notably, they'll have these action-based ones. And so if you were to try my code based on this system, it would not work. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and disable the sample one that we've had working here for a bit, and we're gonna convert it over to the new one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring in the XR room scale rig, cool. Um, and you'll notice uh, it's pretty much the same here, but if you were to dig into it, um, there's some new stuff. For instance, the camera has a different track pose driver, which is the, your, your head mounted display. Um, and the controllers have this action based XR controller with all of these empty boxes. And so that's why it wouldn't work if you were to try to run my examples because all of these actions haven't been defined, so it doesn't know what to do with your controllers. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the package manager real quick, and under the uh, installation for XR Interaction Toolkit 0.10, uh, there's this default input actions. So you wanna go ahead and install that, and it'll create basically a, a pre-configured inputs for the uh, XR controllers. So we'll hit that. And you'll see it shows up here, default input action. So we can close this now. And if we go in here, um, the, basically the new input system lets you define a bunch of inputs um, however you want. So as new controllers come into market, you can just create a new, a new one for these. So you can see that the XRI right hand has all these different available configurations. So you can track your position based on the device position or you can add more stuff, but we're not gonna go into the new input system. We just wanna make sure that this has been imported because we're going to use it. So what we're gonna do is on the XR rig, we need to add an input manager. So we'll just type input and select the input manager. And we'll set this uh, action asset size We'll just set that to one so that it'll let us put in a file there. And element zero has no input action asset assigned, so we can actually open this up and we'll just see that one that we just brought in with the sample, the XRI default input action. So we'll just click that and now that is set up. And then our left hand controller, like I said, has this XR controller action based. We're gonna remove that and then we'll come over here and we'll select this XRI default left controller and we'll just drag that in and it'll do the same thing but now you can see that they're all filled in so it knows what to do for your position, for your rotation, for your select, all that good stuff. And then we'll do the same thing to the right hand 
So we will remove the component for the controller and bring in the default right hand controller. And now that's all set up. Okay, so now um, the rest of my tutorial should work. Uh, I need to go ahead and copy stuff from my um, examples. So in my example, I had a teleportation provider. So I'll go ahead and add a teleportation provider. And then it needed a locomotion system. So I'll add the locomotion system. The locomotion system needs to know where the rig is. So I'll just drag and drop the rig into that. Okay, and then my uh, other one had my jumper script that I created, my character controller and my mover script. So I will add those here in reverse order. So I'll add the mover first, uh, the character controller, I had previously set the character controllers Y to one because as you can see here in this image, it's kind of half in the ground and half out. So I'll set that to one just so that it's touching the floor. And then the most complicated of all of them is of course the jumper script that we had. Um, it needs to know what your input source in. So we'll just set that to the right hand. It needs to know where the cube is. So we'll just drag and drop the yellow cube and that's all there is to that. So now, um, if I run this, there is a, a requirement. Um, in order for the XR input system or the input system in general to work, Unity has to have focus. So if I were to have, you know, a window with focus in front of Unity, it would not work. So you wanna make sure that Unity is the topmost window. And then we'll go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Okay, so here we are, uh, my controller works, left, right, left, right, forward, back. Uh, my grip button still works. And uh, my teleport should work. And my, um, where's my bricks? Oh, I didn't put bricks in my hands. Uh, but my door should still work. As you can see, my, my raycast is still set to the default. So let me go ahead and make a couple changes so that we have the bricks and the raycast is the right size. So I'll go into the right hand controller and mess with the uh, Raycast or XR Ray Interactor and we have that Raycast set to 30 again. We want to set that back to 0.5 as we did in the last video. Um, and then we also want to have those cubes for the hands. So we'll just uh, create a cube here. Set the size to I believe was 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That's not right. Forgot the tab. 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Cool. And then do the same for the right hand, create a cube, make it 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And for the right hand, as you can remember, we had, uh, we had to tag the cube key. And we also needed a rigid body so that it would trigger that switch. And so now if we go back in, everything should work as it was before. Okay, so here we are, my hands are blocks again. Uh, my interactor is only 0.5 as opposed to 30 meters. Um, so now if I come back and grab this door handle, here we go, and this will pop open and close this slider because of the rigid body. Okay, so we're back to where we were. And there you have it quick and easy, I hope. Um, it didn't take too much to get things switched over, just a couple of uh, little weirdnesses that we had to incorporate. Um, but hopefully this got you up and running again. If so, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so I know I'm doing a good job. And until next time, I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.